Jesus, the Christ. It was said by the angels that you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And so I've got good news to you today, that Christ is able to save to the uttermost all who look to him. Christ is able, willing, and powerful, and even, I must remind you, Jesus is alive to save sinners. For Jesus was not merely a man. Jesus was more than a man. He was truly man and yet truly God. And he came into the world to save sinners. I must tell you a terrible truth that many people have lied to you, that you are sinners, that you have fallen short of the glory of God. That unless you confess your sins and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will perish. There are very few in this city, very few in the pulpits in this city, who will tell you without equivocation that you are sinners in the hands of a God who will send you to hell. And it is to the praise of his glory to do so. But I must tell you that his heart his love is not to destroy sinners, and yet he must destroy all sinners who refuse to come to him. He must, because he is perfectly just and holy and righteous and good. Oh, you must tremble at the news that God is good, because you and I are sinners. I don't stand here telling you that I am a perfect, pure man. No, I tell you about the one man. I tell you about the one man, Jesus, from Nazareth. Jesus came into the world through the womb of a virgin so that he would not have inherited the curse and the fall of Adam. Jesus lived a perfect and pure life. This man is the only righteous man. There are many supposed good men in this world, many men who hide their sins, Many men who tremble when law enforcement comes around the corner, and I myself must confess that I have sins that I am ashamed of. But I've got good news for you and good news for me, that Christ Jesus saves sinners. He saves them to the uttermost by his power and for his glory and according to his will and his perfect plan. Who can thwart the plan of God? No man. No man, no woman, no child, no president, no king. Who can stay the hand of the Lord? Not one. Today, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. I must tell you the truth. That salvation, being born again to be a Christian, is not a simple and small thing. But even as Jesus was raised from the dead... You yourself must be raised because you are dead in your sins and trespasses. And I'm not saying anyone here specifically, but I'm saying all have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God and must be justified by faith as a gift. The mercy of God then commands you to repent, calls you to repent. And I myself implore you to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why would you die and be perished? Why would you go to a lake of eternal hellfire? Why, I must tell you why, because God is good and holy. And we all are naturally, by the state of our first birth, going to a place of hellfire. Many of us compound that by adding many more sins Many of us, like myself, have lied and stolen and lusted. Many of us have murdered our neighbor in our hearts. Many today murder their littlest neighbor, mothers murdering their children in their womb, so-called abortion. But it is nothing less than murder. So I must tell you the truth again, that though we are in deep need of help from God. There is help only in Jesus. 
not in some generic God, not in the God of Islam, not in the God of Jehovah Witnesses. They pervert the truth. Many in the city pervert the truth, turning the grace of God into license for sin. But you must tremble before holy God. You must see yourself as wretched and miserable and mourn. And you must come to this God, not commanding Him to do anything for you, but you must beg Him for mercy, asking Him to have mercy on you, the sinner. And God is pleased to save sinners. There is more joy in heaven over a single soul that is saved than are all those who are already in heaven. So I plead with you today to turn towards the mercies of God, turn away from the wrath of God that is currently abiding on the unbelieving, the sons of disobedience. Turn to Christ and you will be saved. There is mercy and help and hope in Jesus. There is no hope in man. There is no hope in your finances, your future, unless you have Christ. There is only a fearful expectation of judgment to come. For the soul that sins shall die, and after death comes the judgment. So I plead with you. I plead with you by the mercies of God, for the love of your soul, to consider the words that I've spoken to you. They're not my words. My message is from old, from the very book of Genesis, Jesus proclaimed himself. He said, there will be a seed of a woman, and he will crush the head of the serpent. And when Jesus was raised on the cross, he saved all those who looked to him. Do not consider your righteousness, you have none. But do not consider your sins, for even though they are great, Jesus saves the worst of criminals. You can look to me as a testimony that though I was the worst, God had mercy upon me. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of salvation. It is righteousness from God, for it says that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. He prepared good works that we would walk in. All praise to the glory of God, all praise to Jesus, who saves and sustains. Oh, look to Christ today. Open his word. We have Bibles, we have tracts, we have testimonies. We will plead with you to turn from your sins, from the love of this world, to the risen Christ. Jesus is King. Jesus is Lord. And He is able to save even the hardest of hearts, even the worst of criminals. But you must repent. We all must repent of our sins and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Look to Jim. Look to Him now. Look to Jesus. For those who are trusting in Christ, I say, Psalm 103, verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for those who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower in the field, for the wind passes over it and is gone. 
and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting to those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to them who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Bless the Lord all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, this Lord is worthy to be praised. Come and worship him with me today. Be saved from sin, self, and Satan by the Savior. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Praise his holy name. Amen.